just like you said? No, I said just to take it. Yeah, you don't do nothing with traffic until you and then you throw it in with your Coach and players, thank you for joining us. Uh, Coach, congratulations on the victory. If you could give us a quick uh, opening statement about tonight's game. Yeah, um, two good lineups that are very dangerous, but runs were at a premium tonight uh, for a few different reasons. Uh, one was the defense was outstanding on both sides, and there was also just some balls that were stung, um, you know, that defenders were in a position to make a play on. Um, glad we were able to get it done for a lot of reasons. Last time we were in that dugout, Drew pitched really well for us, uh, but he pitched even better tonight. And we just kind of followed his lead, and he helped put us out front, which is what you, what you want your starter to do. Um, and you know, fortunate to win. I mean, every team in that league's good, but North Carolina had as much success as anybody in it, and they had kind of been a force of nature, and still are capable of being that. Um, you know, with all that had gone on, so I think it says a lot for our guys to come out and have the focus they did. After a pretty emotional win, um, there is a separator day in there. Uh, so kudos to our players for that. OK, we're going to have questions for the players. We'll start right here in front. I guess for both you guys, just reaction to Inslee's catch there in the second inning. Uh, I was very hyped because it, it saved me from it and probably would have been a triple maybe even on Southern Parker. But uh, he hit that wall hard. So I was just making sure he was OK. Um, but I was, I was just dumbfounded. It was a crazy catch. We're going to go one, two, three. Matt Talrini from World Baseball Network. Um, for Drew and KT, what's it like to just be the first program to go 2-0 and in Omaha in school history and just have you know, a community like Knoxville and other alumni just to have your support through this? Uh, I will say our fans have been great all season long. Uh, and then as far as it goes with being 2-0, and I think it's just great that both games we came out and we were ready to win the game right in front of us. Yeah, I'm just happy we put ourselves in this uh, in this spot position. I guess um, it's been awesome seeing the amount of fans that have shown up from Knoxville, uh, all over the country, just wearing orange. Um, this place, you know, it's a pretty special place to us, and so it's awesome that the fans get to come and enjoy it and uh, watch us play our game. Uh, Jackson Ray's Omaha World Herald. Drew, you got in a groove early. Can you talk about just your performance today and also? Um, just dealing with that delay and just, you know, having to manage that. Yeah, it felt really good early on. Um, Cal called a great game behind the plate. Uh, we just had pretty much everything going. You know, I was just trusting with what uh, he had game planned and we had game planned with, and we were going with it. Uh, and they put some good swings on some balls, especially that ball to center field. And they made a really good catch. The defense played well behind me. Uh, so that helped me out in some situations. Uh, then, yeah, the, the, the uh, I guess, break, time break or whatever was unfortunate, but it is just what happens. It's baseball. Um, there's always something that's going to happen. So I went down to the pen, uh, got a loose, and just, you know, uh, Vance made a really good, you know, swing on that uh, that pitch. You know, backed up a cutter, and he made a really good swing. So uh, then coach made the call, and, you know, Kirby got me out of it. So I was uh, happy the guys behind me had my back. Drew, what is it like knowing that Kirby's coming in? What's that level of comfort and, and what you see from him getting out of that gym and also the next inning? Uh, it's awesome, and it's it's easing whenever I see Kirby coming out of the bullpen whenever I'm out there on the mound just because he's been there and done it so many times. Uh, I don't know how many appearances he has in his career at Tennessee, but I think it's top and you know more than anybody else has ever had. So uh, he's been there, seen anything and everything, so I'm very comfortable handing the ball off to him. Questions, right? Yeah. what's going so well for you with the plate so far in, in this tournament? Uh, just trusting our game plan. Um, whenever we, you know, we get the information about the pitcher, and then uh, whenever just get in the box, just making sure I don't get too big. KT, the different ways you guys have won these first two games here in Omaha. Well, what does that say about y'all? Uh, I think it just shows how versatile we are, and it also shows how uh, our will to win. Um, you know, we don't we don't ever think that we're out of a game until, you know, the end of the game. Uh, and even then, I think it's just that we ran out of opportunities. Um, so yeah. Drew, you talk about Kirby seeing anything and everything. You've been around the program a while too. And how much do you think y'all's experiences in Omaha have been helping these last couple of games and knowing how to go through this? 
Yeah, last year we got a taste of what it's like to be here. Um, but we also got a taste of what it's like to be in the loser's bracket and how that's, it's, it's hard to come out of that, that side of the bracket. And so, uh, you know, we've really grinded out these last two games to put ourselves in this position to where we're, we're ahead 2-0. Um, and, yeah, there's, just, there's a bunch of guys on this team that have done it and been here. And uh, that, I think that experience has, you know, really helped us through it all. Do we have any questions for the student athletes? One more. One last one. Yeah, Kavaris, what was your reaction to Hunter's catch? And just as a fellow outfielder, what kind of goes through a play like that, just trying to make a play in a catch like that? Uh, well, I was running I was running over there to, to back him up, and I was screaming that he was about to hit the wall, which I doubt he heard me. Uh, but once he hit it, my initial reaction was, ooh. And then I saw the ball still in his glove, and I was like, let's go. So a lot of different emotions going on right there. Thank you for asking that question because I interrupted into the first question of the day. So I appreciate you it. Got? Gentlemen. Coach, you look for players that will run through a wall for you, and you quite literally have that. What does that mean to you with those players like that? Um, it means a lot. It means when you come to work, you better bring the same, you know, obviously energy uh, and positive attitude, uh, but also work ethic. Um, you know, Ensley came in and was a guy who had to red shirt, and I don't know if. He certainly had the athletic ability and the mentality. I don't know if he was ready, um, you know, to do it right away without the repetitions. And he's a guy that's all over the facility at all times, uh, working on things, especially when he was younger. Now he's able to kind of go about it like a pro now that he's got his own system. But that's why he's in there. That's why he was in there last year. And uh, he's pretty much reached Drew Gilbert's stage where in practice we don't want him anywhere near the wall because we know we'll get our money's worth in a game. It's usually the opposite with, with an outfielder at high school level or college level, they'll shy away from it. And uh, he's not scared. He's a fighter. Well, at this time, we'll let Kavaris and Drew leave, and we'll let this open time for Coach. Thank you, gentlemen, for your Thanks. time. Sorry to direct traffic there. I thought he, we were trying to all right. get our guys. We'll go one, two, three. Then we got four over here. We'll go first question. Uh, We'll get to everybody. We got some time. We'll go first right up front. Yeah, Tony. There have been a number of great outfield plays made in the series already, including your own. Just as a baseball guy, just not to coach Tennessee. How much do you appreciate what you've seen? If you've seen any of these, and how much as a baseball guy can you just appreciate what he did tonight on that catch? You you can in general of the others. Um, you know, I mentioned it after our. Uh, you know, super regional against Evansville. Um, you know, some, sometimes there's it's not the right occasion to shake hands. But, uh, man, when I was a little kid in St. Louis, it's a hockey city. My dad's from Chicago. It's a hockey city. I, I love that deal where, you know, two teams are trying to beat each other's brains in, but they have the respect for the effort and the ability to be at that level. That's why that handshake is so special in the hockey playoffs. And uh, it took me a while at a young age to figure out, like, why are they shaking hands? They just fought. One guy knocked another guy's teeth out or whatever it might be. Uh, shout out to Bob Probert. And, um, you know, I, I think it's kind of the same admiration. You want to be the best team here, um, but you have to take a uh, step back and realize you're very fortunate to be amongst the best athletes at the college level. Um, a lot of these guys you scouted and – or, or you see in the Cape Cod doing well, or Team USA and, and things like that. So uh, you got to pinch yourself and make sure you're not being a fan too much, but you're crazy to not be um, just at the spectacle this thing has become. Question right here. Yeah, Tony, we've asked the, the players about the experience of, of having been here before and how it's helped. And I want to ask you, has this felt different for you with some of the lessons learned previous times here? Yeah, but I think... Um, I think more so, too, you guys asked Drew about Kirby coming in. Um, when you go out there, I mean, I mean, that's Frank's deal with the pitchers. I stay out of his way. I, I think that's maybe the smartest thing I do. Uh, but when I'm out there, I'm on the field, and there's certain feedback and body language and words that are said you get from the players. You look in the outfield and kind of see what those guys are doing, the pitcher you're taking the ball from, and the guy coming out of the bullpen. And uh, that's just one example of how this team's a little bit different. Um, Drew wants to be out there, but he was almost excited to give Kirby the ball and said kind of some things to me and the other guys that just made you feel good, made you feel like um, we're in a good position to play our brand of baseball. And that's not always the case when you're in a high-pressure situation, if you want to call it that, 
or in a spot where a lot of emotions can be running wild. And um, this group seems to stick together. I feel like we're getting even closer as the year goes on. And then they have an interesting level of maturity about them. I'm sure anti-Tennessee people will argue. But there's an interesting level of maturity there over the course of nine innings with all the different things that can happen in a game. I'll go right here. Um, Tony, obviously you have had a few incredible teams the last few seasons, but why is it this team that's been able to go 2-0 and in the World Series so far? I think that's tough. I think when you get here, it's chaos, and anyone, well, at least just from my vantage point, I'm not experienced enough or wise enough to say why this or that, because look at the first three games. I mean, out of the six teams that played, it could have been any six of them won their first game. I mean, it, it was madness, and it'll probably continue to be that. Um, so I think you just want to be a little better than the other team on that given day, and that can come in a variety of ways, as you all pointed out earlier. But if I was going to answer just on the team's success for the whole year, I got to go broken record and just say the team chemistry and camaraderie that's there. Um, some greater than the parts applies to a lot of different things, and it certainly applies to teams. Um, it'd be nice to have Michael Jordan and say you got the best guy that can take over or Peyton Manning at quarterback, and he can lead the way. But this is a deal where you got nine guys and baseball's flying around and arms moving and things like that um, and energy out of the dugout. There's just a lot of things that matter in our sport with all due respect to others. And I think what, what carries a heavy weight for us is, is that camaraderie. Okay, question way in the back. Tony, I know it's fresh, but any type of update on Hunter and his health after being taken out of the game? And then second, um, what, what is different about tonight with Drew than maybe his last couple starts? Yeah, the Drew one is easy. I mean, there was conviction to it. Um, you know, I was asked by Chris Burke and, and the ESPN staff to compare year by year with Drew. And the one thing you all and, and, and John Wilkerson and me always talk about with Drew is consistency. So to say, I mean, I think he's really worked hard. Body's improved a little bit. Leadership's definitely gone up. Um, stuff, there's a little bit added on there. But if you're going to say how different is he as a player from freshman to junior year, it's, it's not that different. I mean, his hard work has paid off. Uh, but consistency is a word that sticks out. But one thing that can happen as you do get older, or especially when you experience this junior year, when you're going to go on to pro ball, and you're also supposed to be a team leader, and maybe you move off that day that you've been used to, you, you can add stuff in into the basket, you know, or, or whatever analogy would be good, um, you know, to use. And, and sometimes cutting out the fat or not adding things will help you stay true to your roots. And tonight, I think um, there was, you know, a real simple approach. I've got good stuff. I'm a good athlete. I'm a good leader. I'm going to go do it. And there, there didn't seem to be any extra thoughts or trying to accomplish any, any bonus or extra things. You know, Sneed was awesome out there. He wanted to throw better. Um, I mean, I think anytime you get North Carolina guys out, you, you, you threw good. Um, but he admittedly tried to strike a guy out that he eventually walked. And again, when you try and add things into the basket or whatever the heck is the right way to say it, you're probably going to detract from your performance a little bit, and Drew wasn't going to let that happen tonight. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, I said in the mid-game interview, a little pressure there, mid-game when you got to do that stuff. I said um, he, he was woozy or wobbly or something. I think I said he was woozy. What I didn't mean is his head. I meant wobbly. Just he, he crashed into that wall, and I think hip. Um, you know, I just kept relying on Woody and Doc Klinks in our dugout, too. So I kept saying, what do you think? What do you think? But eventually, you could see he wasn't moving around his best. And in the back of my mind, I was thinking, as soon as we got a lead, we can't afford, with the way Drew's throwing the ball, to not get to a fly ball, uh, which ironically is what got us into that spot. I mean, like, you, you don't – you, you got to just sit in the stands and watch each pitch because you don't know which one is going to affect the game the most. And same thing as a player. You just got to hook it up each pitch because – who knows what happens if that ball gets over his head. Um, tremendous play. Okay, we're going to go one, two, three, four, and that'll be it. Coach, you, you met John Walker from the Omaha World Herald. You had mentioned that runs were at a premium tonight. KT hits the, hits the three-run shot in the fourth, and I think you guys got another the inning after. W what is it about this team's home run ability that has allowed you guys to, to kind of flip games in, in a moment's notice? Yeah, I, I think – the one thing that you'd be remiss if you didn't point out is Sprague was so good, and he's kind of their Drew Beam. 
Um, I don't mean to speak for them, but just watching and looking at the numbers, he's incredibly consistent. He's a strike thrower. Um, but some of those outs did not come very easily for him. Um, even Burke strikes out in the first inning, um, but it might have been a 10 pitch at bat, and it allows our guys to see what's going on. Our guys were kind of leaning on him. And then, you know, the one thing we've, we've kind of mentioned with our guys is like anybody on that list, and Reese Chapman was in the lineup tonight. Bargo did what he did against Evansville. Any one of them might be able to get you or, or do something for us. But when everyone's kind of involved in trying to contribute, you know, you kind of end up with that deal, like I said, where we're kind of leaning on Sprague a little bit and someone was just able to get to him. So that would kind of be my explanation of that deal. And, yeah, I mean, I think when you do have the best athletes playing defense behind some of the best arms in the country, runs are always going to be difficult to get. Yeah, right here. Hey, Coach, Chris Phillips, SEC Unfiltered. You talked earlier about how great the defense was tonight. We all know what Christian Moore can do swinging the bat. But that play he made later in the game, moving to uh, the backhand side, kind of flipping the ball underneath, and, of course, Blake picking it over there at first, one of the best plays you're going to see in college baseball. Just talk about how valuable an asset he is in your infield. Again, we all know what he can do swinging it, but one of the best defensive second basemen in the country as well. Yeah, no, it's it's nuts. Um, you know, if, if you look at that play, the replay, fortunately, we were able to watch it more than one time. Um, and, and it was a, a pretty dang good play, but it's nuts to think, you, you know, what happens if that? He might have saved us, you know, from going to another guy in the bullpen. Um, although, like I said, I thought Snead was throwing the ball well. And then North Carolina has been able to mount some comebacks too, so you, you're, you're trying to, you know, prevent any chaos from starting. But, yeah, he's taking a lot of pride. It wasn't good over there at second freshman year, just to be honest with you. And uh, kind of like we used Ensley as an example, it became a pride point for him. And he got really good at it last year. And then now he's gotten to the point where he played shortstop for us at some point this year. He was begging to go to center as soon as Ensley came out of the game. Um, he has been there this year. And uh, it's a good conversation for scouts to have. Um, clearly, this guy's physical enough and smart enough to be a hitter at that level. Where are we going to play him? I think they've got a lot of options. And at the very least, it wouldn't be uh, Dan Ugla, with all due respect. I think he played at Memphis, right, Tennessee? Um, you know, you're not just putting a bat at second base. Like, as you mentioned, he's pretty dang good over there for us. Okay, last two right there and right here. Right there. Uh, you mentioned during the pitching change, it, it kind of, you saying you feel like you guys were in a good spot to play your brand of baseball. Uh, what would you say your brand of baseball is? Um, well, I, I don't think you want to get too caught up in, in what's going on with, you know, they get a guy on base or, or what are we doing here or it's, it's, you know, you're not going to be relax relaxed. Everyone says be loose. Well, come on. <laughs> we know where we're at. So, but, but you can't be tense and you got to still be able to breathe and carry on a conversation and have a realistic understanding of what the situation is. Call it self-awareness is big in that situation. Um, so I think that vibe, they want that from us. They don't want us yelling at them like absolute maniacs, if, if that's a good example. Um, and then we also want them just to be present in whatever the situation is. And in that deal where we're having a meeting, you can't play ball. You just got to kind of prepare for the next situation. The next thing is hand the ball off to Kirby. Everyone in that moment talked about how much they trust Kirby, which he's obviously earned. And then we go out there and play ball and see what happens. And like I said here, you know, with these teams and in the moments and all that, anything can swing one way or the other, but we would prefer it be our team showing up and doing what we do, which you guys have seen, um, and, and go to battle with that and just see where, where it gets us. Yeah. Last question right here. You mentioned Kirby there. What has allowed him to succeed in, in his role being that it's so different from what he was doing for you guys last year? Yeah, he's been asked to do a lot more, and uh, – Maybe it's fitting parallel there because he's done a lot more in the community and in our locker room. It's been every year just a growing presence of a guy uh, who is a special, special individual. And uh, even though it's, you know, you don't see a guy creeping up, you know, Frank's had these guys like Crochet's a lefty that goes from 87, 88 to 100. Um, that's not the progression Kirby has made, but he's worked at a lot of different things um, to progress as a pitcher, not just a person. And, um, you, you know, I, I think he's continued to improve as he is. But the one thing about throwing him out there is, like today, everybody feels good. W whatever happens with him on the mound, so be it. We'll go back to the hotel. Maybe you're frustrated. Maybe you're happy. But you're going to put your head on that pillow and be good 
um, with whatever it is that he does because he's one of those guys that you go to battle with. So uh, this this whole thing I throw out there about our locker room's great. You know, it's not me. This is, this is a lot of special things that got to go in place. And Drew being unselfish and congratulating a guy for getting the ball on opening day instead of him when it's kind of his pitching staff, uh, that's something. And then Kirby just being Kirby, um, he gets the ovations he does for a reason. That's something. Coach, thank you very much for your time. You bet. Thank you. Michael Jordan, you like? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm, you like Sean I'm Kemp better, though? He likes. I'm a pizza fan. Oh. Yeah.